here we are inside of Illustrator where we have uh, the vine that we want to animate. We have the stem and each leaf on a separate layer. So we have uh, 10 layers all in all, um, which we will be animating individually uh, in After Effects. And separating it into different layers will help us immensely when we uh, do the separation inside of After Effects and the animation per layer. So inside of After Effects, um, we take our vine.ai file here and drop it into our uh, project field. It'll ask us uh, what kind of import we want to do. And uh, we can import footage and we can also import composition. Footage will import either the merged layers or one layer at a time. So we want to input a composition because we want each and every layer separated. And we could either make it document size or layer size. This will uh, depend, uh, of course, on the document that we have. So if the illustrated document is, let's just say, full HD, the document of the composition or the composition will also be full HD. If we choose layer size, it'll be the size of the specific layers. So they will fill that out. Doesn't actually really matter which one of these we choose. And then okay. Now we have a composition up here called Vine and a folder with all our different layers in it. So if we double click Vine, we can see the Vine here with all the separate layers that we can now animate because there's no animation as of yet. We'll start out animating the stem of the vine, growing from the bottom up to the top. To do that, we will uh, use an effect called Right On, and we will separate the layer into its own pre-composition. So you can hit the layer here, select it, right-click it, and choose Pre-Compose. If you have an older version of After Effects, you need to go to Layer, and then at the bottom you have the Pre-Compose here. Shortcut Control Shift C or Command Shift C on a Mac. So we have different settings we can do here. We will leave all the attributes in Vine. Otherwise, we will also move the size of the composition and everything um, which we don't want. So we will leave all the attributes in the new composition and we will call this Stem. And I'll click OK. So now, layer one down here. It's in its own composition. We can double click it as well. So now we have two compositions open. The stem has been separated into its own composition. First of all, we'll need a mask that this vine can grow along. We'll create this mask with the pen tool. So if we select the pen tool up here, select the layer. So I like to do a rough shape before I then do the final tweaking of the shape. So I tend to just click the bottom, click in the center and then in the top. And with the convert vertex tool up here, I can afterwards grab the single vertices or the anchor points and I can drag them out so that I create these bezieres. I could even go in closer here and I could start moving these along by holding down control on the keyboard, see how my cursor shifts and I could make it fit the shape a bit better. It's always a good idea to start outside of the uh, stem itself or the shape that you want to draw. Otherwise, because this is a brush function, it will start by showing you the bottom of the stem here already, which we might not want. As soon as we are done with this, we will open the or find the right on effect. So just right, right here, we have the generate right on, you can also find it under the effects tab up here. So we'll take this right on effect and we will drag it onto our layer. So if we unfold our layer right now, we have masks, effects, and transform, we want to copy our masks path. So the mask path here, and you can select it and on your keyboard, control or command C for copy. And then within the effects and the right on effect, you will select the brush position and you'll hit control V or command V for paste. So as you might see on our shape up here, we can now animate this brush effect along the line that we have just drawn. This won't do anything. So we need to do the paint style effect down here. We need to set it to reveal original image. Revealing the original image will of course reveal it, but as the brush currently is so small, it actually only re reveals a very, very small portion of our stem. So we will need to make this brush a lot bigger. So we have the brush size here, which is currently set to two pixels. 
we will need this to be a lot bigger. I would encourage you to drag your time slider to after these keyframes that have been generated so that the entire vine is visible and then drag the brush size to a size where all of these small branches here are actually fully visible. So when you're satisfied with the value, you can try to scrub through the animation and see how it actually animates on and off. I'll make this fit so you can see. So now it animates on and off. My animation will currently go from zero to about two seconds. You'll all, always be able to just click the end or the starting keyframe and drag it outwards or inwards if you want to make the animation faster or slower. Next step, if we go back to our vine composition here, is that we want to animate these leaves on and off. We have the stem animated here, but it seems a bit boring without the leaves doing a small animation. Let's go in and select layer number two, which is the bottom leaf here. So I'll go to the first frame where I think that the leaf should pop out, which is about here because I wanted I want all of these leaves to pop out along with the stem itself. And I of course want it to pop out from the stem. So it needs to, to look like it's coming from the stem or from the ground or wherever this vine is growing. But currently if I change my scale of this, it would change that position in relation to the anchor point that I have. And my anchor point is of course in the middle of this layer here. So I need to move my anchor point. The easiest way to do this is by using the pan behind tool. It's located up here, pan behind tool or shortcut Y. So you can take the anchor point and move it along. And I want to move it to here where I want my leaf to spring out from. The only thing that I will be animating for this leaf will be the scale effect or the scale transform. So if you select the layer down here and on our keyboard hit S, it'll open up the scale. This can also be located if you unfold all of these under transform. Currently I have it at 100% of scale. So if I click my stopwatch, I get the keyframe 100%, but I want it to become 100% a bit later. So I can take my keyframe and drag it outwards a bit. I might even want to zoom in on my timeline here so that I get a better overview of these frames. As I have dragged this frame outwards, I have opened up this spot here for a new keyframe. And I want to start out by being zero. So I'll put in the value zero. Both X and Y scale values will, because they are locked together, go to zero. So now my leaf is basically zero. And if I go forward in time, you can see how the leaf pops out. But an animation where the leaf just pops out like this is a bit boring. We can add this bounce effect that we normally see in a lot of um, different animation videos. Like two frames before we hit the final 100%, we will go to 110%. This will make the leaf bounce out. So if I say that this should be the end, by the way, N is for setting the end of my work area. And then I can hit ramp preview either up here or I can hit zero on my num keyboard, but not everyone has a num key. So this is the effect that I have achieved right now. So of course now I want to animate the rest of these leaves. So it can be done in a pretty simple way. I can take my keyframes, the three that I have just, just created, and I can say copy, so command or control C. Then I can select the next leaf and find where the vine stem hits. So the layer is selected and control or command V. It will automatically be inserted in the scale value because it's they are scale values, those that I have copied. So if I hit S, you can see that these have been inserted here. So now this pops up with the same effect. So now I just need to move my anchor point. So I'll continue doing this for the rest of the leaves. So now we have an animation of the leaves and the vine stem, but we still need these small dots. And the, the way I want to animate these are I want them to not just all come up at once or be animated in at once. I want them to pop up individually, but seeing as they are on each their own individual layer, I will have to go in and open that layer in a pre comp to separate them. What we need to do is we need to with the selection tool, select the first of these, which is layer number four, we need to either right click and choose pre compose or go to layer precompose. We can say uh, this is uh, dots underscore 01. We will leave all the attributes in line. Click OK. So if we open this up now, we have these three dots. So what I want to do here is I actually just want to separate them with a the mask. 
but I need them on three separate layers. So I actually need three separate layers. So I will select my layer here and I will duplicate them. If you go to edit, you can choose duplicate or you can just use the shortcut control D. So I'll be using the shortcut. So select the layer and control D twice so that we get two of them. So on the top layer, I want to isolate this first circle here. I'll be using the rectangle tool here and selecting this first area. Then I'll select the layer just beneath it and select the second of these spheres. And I'll select the bottom layer and drag a selection around this as well. So now we have all of these separated into their own layer. We need to make the exact same effect with these, but we want them to pop out from the center. The problem is we've masked them from a original layer. So we also need to do the pan behind tool uh, treatment on these layers. So select the pan behind tool and make sure that the anchor point is set in the center of the circle for each and every of the three layers, like so. So now if we select all the layers and we hit S, we will collapse all the selections that we originally had and only open up the scale values. So what we want to do is we actually want to animate all of them at once, but then afterwards shift these selections. Again, I'm starting at frame zero. I will activate scale, which will activate scale and set a keyframe for each and every one of them. I will take this first keyframe, move it outwards, because this is again at 100%. I will zoom in because otherwise they will have the duration of two seconds. So I'll move inwards. I think I want them to be around 10 frames long. Then I'll set a keyframe here that is zero in all of them. So this means that we go from zero to 100. And once again, we will do the 110 effect so that we get the bounce. And I lost my selection, so I had to do it for each of these layers. So what I can do now is I can say that with the normal selection tool up here, I can say that, well, this one should start a bit later. And this one should be even later than that, so that I will get this three bubble type effect. So if I go back to the vine here, it, would anim it will animate within the first few frames which is of course a bad thing. So I need to figure out when do, we, do I want it to animate. And that's around here. So here I will select that layer and move the beginning of that layer to the current frame that I'm on. So that if I set the beginning and the end with B and N here and I ramp preview it, they will pop on in that small section here. So we can see them pop on like that. Okay, I will also be giving these other two layers, the exact same treatment. So now we have the final effect of the vine growing up and all of these dots and leaves turning on individually. So what we would do is we would take this and for instance, create a new composition, it could be full HD, it's up to you. And um, here we could use these vine elements, we could rotate them, we could time offset them, whatever, and have them grow in different corners, for instance, and then we would have kind of this fancy effect to overlay different images and stuff. Of course, these could be done a lot more intricate and with a lot more detail and longer and so on and so forth. You could also make a duplicatable element, like um, for instance, having two vines, whereas the one would then overlay the other, which could then be time delayed so that they could kind of continue indefinitely, might even be a bit of 
better with a bit of rotation. So it seems like it kind of spawns from the same vine, like so. So this is a tutorial about how to create a simple growing vine. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and thanks for watching.